Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. It's Adam, your man here at Worldwide Stereo, and this is our happy hour event, 5 o'clock today. Uh, yesterday, we uh, did a lot. We talked about, had some very special guests on. It was awesome. We had Focal with us and guys from France, guys from Canada, talking everything Focal, their speaker technology, what they do, um, specifically that kind of makes them special to all of us. And a lot of us actually got the opportunity to go to their factory. Uh, we flew uh, all the way to France and got to go to St. Antonin and Bourbon Lancy to see not only their driver factory, their research and development area, uh, talk to the engineers, see a lot of the stuff being made, and then also over in their cabinet factory and see how everything is handcrafted over there. It was really awesome. So I thought it'd be cool tonight if I brought some of the guys in that were on that trip with myself. Uh, one gentleman was with me. It was kind of split into two uh, two sections, you know, and uh, I had one guy with me and then the other two guys were on the other half of the trip. So we're going to talk a lot about Focal and our experience there that we had, which was absolutely awesome. Um, and uh, certainly answer any questions you have about speakers, suggestions for speakers, anything from the Focal line. We're going to talk about some of our favorite speakers, demos, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to bring my bros in right now. Give me a second and I'll get them on here. Here we go. What's up, bros? What up? Hey. <laughs> oh, we're going there again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have to be inverted all the time? I mean, you guys know I love Top Gun. We're always inverted. And, yeah. We're always yeah. inverted. Which direction are we? What's all right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we weren't inverted when it. we flew from Philadelphia to, to Paris. Thank God for that. I got a great Polaroid of it, though. You know, I'll show you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so welcome, my friends and our, 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 our viewing friends. We have Ryan, we have Sean and Austin, all worldwide stereo salespeople like myself. And we're here tonight to chat with you about our trip to Focal, answer questions for you about speaker technology or what speakers might be right for me or anything. Forget it. Anything, anything technology. You guys want to have a question, please ask us. You got four guys here that are willing to help you not only tonight, but certainly remotely as well. We're all here for you. We're still working remotely, so you can reach out to us um, by calling us or emailing us. Any questions, any projects that you have coming up? I know things are starting to roll out there with projects and you're starting your redoing those outdoor projects and things at the house. So we're here to help you get us involved sooner than later uh, and you can have a really great successful project. So I'm gonna go around the table here. Ryan, you haven't been on in a while. I think I had you on one of my first uh, happy hour events, which is great. So let's go around the horn here, remind everybody who we are, where we're from and what you're drinking tonight. So my name is Ryan Rumer. I work out of the Montgomeryville location with Adam and Sean. Um, been with them about five years now, full time. And every day is a, a new experience with the team as well as what comes in through the door or what phone call comes in. So it's really exciting. And what you got? Mix it, mixing it up tonight, I'm going something from Breckenridge, Colorado out of the distillery. Oh, 100, hey, 100, 105, very nice. 105 proof. Uh, anyone was concerned, it's just two fingers, so we're, we're at a good safe limit. Oh, just got it. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. I uh, actually get some, uh, if anybody out there, Boardroom Spirits has been fantastic. Um, I am a bourbon, bourbon man, uh, but I literally put our order in last night. They were here today. Uh, dropping it off. So anybody looking for anything like that, they've been fantastic. They're local to us here. Boardroom Spirits, thank you so much. Austin. Yes. Thanks What's for <laughs> not, not too much. Thanks no? for having me back on again uh, to discuss Focal and the trip. Yeah. Uh, probably up there in one of my top experiences uh, within my life. <laughs> really? Great yeah, it was, it was definitely top five for sure. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can, I can uh, agree with that. I mean, yeah. I always had this kind of phobia of uh, leaving the USA just for whatever reason. I don't know. Sure. Just something about what if I got stuck yeah. or something. I don't know. So I just... well, we had a we had a great group of guys, you know. And um, it, it's one thing to visit factories here in the United States, which we do often, uh, go to remote trainings, but it's a whole nother you know, thing to have an opportunity to leave the country with, mm -hmm. you know, guys that you work with and, and you get to know them better. You get to know the manufacturer better. It, it was, um, it was really a good experience. And, um, I'm grateful that, you know, we had the opportunity to, to do that totally. uh, tonight to, uh, keep the theme. I have a nice glass of 
Pinot Noir from the same area in which we visited. Um, and, you know, the idea was to uh, support our Eastern friends there. Um, so, Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I break out the wine every now and again, for sure. There's a couple. Th <laughs> but uh, check this out. So, Amanda, is that Toy Story behind you, Adam? Love the Easter eggs. Yes. I have Forky and I have Slinky behind me tonight. So uh, I like to switch it up as much as possible. Sometimes it's Buzz Lightyear. I even have baby. I have a baby shark, but couldn't figure out how to get it to stay propped up. So we'll see if we can figure that one out. Um, here we go. I already have some things coming across here. I don't mean to cut you out, Sean, but I want to get going on these. The Borrega Planar 6, are you able to tune the tone arm? Not sure that I've done it right. So, Matt, you're talking to the guy right here. Out of our Montgomeryville location, I do all the turntable setups. So that's something that we can certainly help you out with. Um, right now, the showrooms are kind of closed down, but if you'd like, uh, you can reach out to us again here, Matt. I will give you our information again. Here's actually my personal information. If you want to email me and you can keep me on your radar and when things kind of loosen up at the showroom, we're able to get back. Uh, you can uh, bring your turntable into me and we can take a look at it and get you set up properly. Or if you want, you know, maybe I can call you and maybe give some tips over the phone or something like that. Okay. Sean, what's up, bro? <laughs> you got bro. no Easter eggs? No Easter eggs behind you? Uh, just the gnome that my wife put up on the shelf. That kind of creeps me out. A bit. I don't like gnomes. I don't like them, but she loves them, so they're all over the house. Step one, step three. No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh I'm actually drinking a Warwick Farm. I'm probably gonna butcher this name, but Cloud Sabro. A uh, good friend of mine, Rick Browning, was able to uh, hook me up with a couple more of these. I was drinking one last week as well. They are delicious, so thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. Shout out. And uh, right. yeah, our trip, our trip to France was fantastic. Just uh, being able to kind of experience the culture and, and everything was amazing. The food, the people, everything. Uh, I mean, I, I, I couldn't have had a better experience. And the second group was actually lucky enough, Austin and myself, to have an extra day where we got to tour Paris, um, where we walked, I think, like 20 miles in one day. Yeah. And it was really hot, but it was amazing. We saw so many really, really cool things yep. like the Louvre and Notre Dame and, uh, yeah, just all the cool sites in France, or in Paris. So it was, it was a great experience. Couldn't have been Yeah, thank, I'd say thank you for sending those pictures over to me. We'll get those up and we'll share our, uh, our trip and our experience with everybody out there. Um, you know, Jamie, you've been back to work for what two days now, and you already got a bust on me. <laughs> oh. <You're> gonna, really? <laughs> Come on, can't Jeez. knock it if it's true. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a question, there's a, that's some questions already coming through, which I love here. Here we go. Let's see. It says, I have a Sonos ZP90 for the pool and garage, but they're not going to be getting updates anymore. What are my options for adding Sonos to the kitchen without ditching my existing stuff? That's a great question, Chris. And that's something that a lot of people are dealing with right now with the whole, there's a, so Sonos has been around for a long time. Well, I, I don't want to talk. Sean, you got this? You can take this, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so what What's is happening is if you have older equipment, um, they're not currently doing updates anymore i think that's where chris was going with the question but i think a good way to get around that is if you got one piece like a new uh streamer or a new uh sonos amp you could actually uh do the new current updates that they have and you could group the older zones with the newer zones to get the new features is that kind of what you were going to go with that adam yeah so you can still you can still get sonos and what's going to end up happening yeah. is, is that you can unfortunately you're useful well, i don't say unfortunately but the way it's going to work if you want everything to work together your Sonos system is going to be as up to date as your lowest up to date product is. Meaning, if you have some of the older stuff and you have a newer stuff, the newer stuff won't be able to take advantage of those features because you have older equipment in your system. So it'll all work together. But if you wanted to, there are upgrade options for everything out there. So if you have an older ZP90, as he's talking about, which some people also call the Sonos Connect, you can get an upgrade. As you can 30% upgrade to get the new one and upgrade all your old equipment so everything will play nicely together. And some people, I'd say, may, might have got a little upset about this, but if you think about it, I mean, I've been doing this almost, well, 20, 20 years, almost 21 years, and Sonos have been out for a really, really long time. 
And, and it's just like anything. And we're going to start seeing more of this with a computer processor and a chip in it. It's only going to last for so long. I mean, it can only withstand so much information. So uh, things do need to be upgraded over time. Um, and the products that they're updating have been out for God, 10 plus, 12 plus years. Uh, and that's a long time for today's technology. So there's still some options there. You can integrate new stuff with old stuff. And there's also an upgrade platform for all of our existing Sonos people out there. Great question, Christos. That was, that was. Even though, I, let's see, thanks for tuning in. Oh, so I didn't even get to, what am I drinking tonight? Yeah. So I have. Oh, yeah, what um, are you drinking, big guy? Yeah, really, right? Uh, from Concha Hocken. This is Island in the Sun, double IPA. See, it looks like they have little uh, uh, Pac-Man like yeah. logo kind of things on it and everything. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> cool. I don't get out of bed for anything less than a double IPA. So. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll put that back there. Don't drink my beer, Forky. All right. So I want to talk about the trip after I take a sip. Mm. Okay. That's just that's like one a Viking. In there. That's like a Viking mug you got there, dude. <laughs> it's got my name on it too, right? See? Wow. Yeah. Well, I got this as a coaching award, so I coach a lot of I coach a lot of youth football in my day. Now my kids are older, so I'm not doing it, but that's this is one of my gifts. So yeah. Very nice. cool. Thank you. All right, moving along, our folk out trip. So Ryan and I went together. Or there we go. Ryan and I went together. And then Sean and Austin joined us on, what was it, like Wednesday, I think, like Tuesday or Wednesday. We went out on a Friday or a Saturday, and uh, it was a long flight, <laughs> that's for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I remember on the flight over, I did a lot of uh, reading and things like that, took a lot of notes on, on the way over to make sure uh, I knew as much as I could about all of the uh, equipment or the speakers that we were going to be learning about. So I'll start here. I have a lot of the photos lined mm -hmm. up here. And this is the entrance to what is the, you know, the main research and development. So this is in, and I, God, I talked to like a Saint, Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. God. With an American Ooh. accent. <laughs> right. Very <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't sound as uh, romanticized as how the French say it. They, uh, they have a much sweeter language, but. So, oh, I got a no, no here from Emily. No, no, no. Saint. Saint Etienne. Etienne. E yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can't read it or pronounce it. <laughs> anyway, we're doing our best. We are. Yeah. So this was, you know, our arrival there, and kind of our first day was kind of a lot of training and learning about the different materials. And I, I'd say, I'd say to you guys, what do you guys remember most about like the when you think about the training that we had on the technology of the speaker? What was the a big takeaway? I mean, for yeah, for me, it was like you know just kind of really learning about the inverted dome tweeter as much as, yeah. as, as, you know, getting a real, real deep down uh, training on that. What about you guys? Well, there were, there were uh, two different aspects that I found quite fascinating and it depends on really what interests you more personally. You know, you could certainly, uh, you know, discuss how the cabinets of the speakers are manufactured. If you're into, you know, cabinetry design and the actual craftsmanship of it you know that that was really fascinating um for me personally i was more interested and, and more blown away by the science of how the drivers are made you know okay. to me I, i'm always curious about you know how does sound work how do you alter the characteristics of sound how do you achieve certain things so you know just seeing the material they use the shape of the drivers the angles of the drivers um the, the science behind the actual drivers to me was, um, I thought was awesome. Well, yeah, well, the driver factory was awesome. And, and we'll, and we weren't allowed to take any pictures of that, you know, uh, cause that's kind of pretty, uh, proprietary and things like that, but we can certainly tell you all about it. But Ryan, what was your, speaking of like the training days, like we're sitting in the, in the, in the school basically and learning. Yeah. I, I think when we dove into their headphones and okay. learned about, um, the drivers and the tweeters in their headphones. I thought that was pretty eye-opening on, on how everything was divided up and, and made there. And when we finally got to see that, it's all in a room that's entirely clean. Mm -hmm. So only certain people are allowed in there and they're sitting there making everything. And I was just totally blown away by the, the, how small everything is and the large sound scale that that creates. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through some of the pictures right here. And uh, so we had a question, whoops, 
God, I tell you, running two screens. <laughs> Those speakers, did you get a demo of them? Yes, we absolutely did get a demo of these. And this is a video that I showed yesterday. So let me go back and do you see, these are the Vocal Utopia, the Grand Utopias. These are the absolute best speakers that they manufacture. They're slightly over a quarter million dollars for a pair of them. Um, and it, this this speaker to me, when we sat and we demoed these speakers, how big are those? Well, okay, so I'm about 6'3 on a good back day, 6'2 normally. <laughs> um, but um, so you get an idea of, of how tall those speakers are. Um, but these speakers are kind of, they're, they're curved. If you look at them from the side, they're, they have a curvature to them. And what you're able to do is you're actually able to crank that back, okay, or more forward down. You can change that angle. And that has everything to do with kind of where you're sitting and making sure that that mid-range and those tweeters and everything gets aligned and, and shot to the listening position at the same time. So just a really cool feature of the Grand Utopia speaker. Um, to be able to do that and, and to be customized like that. So that was really cool. And that's Nicholas right there, the engineer that we had on yesterday, speaking to that um, uh, that that adjustment right there. And here's a closer up picture of the back of that speaker and more of the things that you can do with it. Uh, so really quite impressive. But Sean, from the uh, from the training, what, uh, what did you kind of take away the most? What was your big thing that you took so away? I don't want to double take on what Ryan said no, no. Uh, or what Austin said. I'm sorry, but the uh, the driver factor is probably the most <clears throat> impressive tour slash educational moment I think I've ever had in this industry. Um, as far as the information and and being able to see um, just how everything is made from point A to kind of point Z and the different steps that they go through um, and the testing that they put everything through before it actually gets to either our showroom or your living room was <clears throat> nothing less than amazing. It was really eye opening for me. Um, I can remember becoming like a true believer in the Focal product after that tour was done. It was it was really amazing. Uh, it was it's just it was it was great. Cool, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's to see everything being made, handmade, and all that was uh, was pretty awesome. <laughs> and you really grab an appreciation. That Go ahead. That video was pretty cool too because it's nice to see what uh, Austin and myself look like when we were able to get haircuts. <laughs> right. I, th I, I, I think I was still shagging it then. <laughs> no, you had a buzz yeah. cut. You're, you're reminded of what a good a good haircut looks yeah, like yeah. on a, on yeah. a semi regular basis, right? Yes. 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 We. So, uh, the cool thing I think for me, this you know, again, I told you I've been doing this a while, but again, these speakers sitting in front of these speakers. Um, so uh, we were listening to, they did a demo of Riders on the Storm from the Doors, a song I've heard, you know, a thousand times, right? Um, and something I know about myself being, you know, if you put me in a band, a drummer, being a drummer is, is something I did for a very long time. So when I go and I see a live show, you know, watching the drummer is just something that I always naturally do. I just, I watch the drummer. I don't watch the guitar player, the lead singer. I just, I focus on the drummer. And I'm sitting here and I'm sitting pretty much in this position because I remember taking this picture sit in dead center they're playing riders of the storm and if you can imagine uh, you know i'm listening and the drummer is kind of set right about here you see where my mouse is moving that's where i was i was focused and i was staring right at that location and that's all i could i could look at was just right there and i didn't realize what i was doing until about a minute and a half into the song and i caught myself and i went i did one of these and i was like oh my god i'm i'm, I'm watching the drummer as i would is if i was watching a live concert i've never done that before again 20 years, I've been listening to music my entire life. I've never done that. And, and that's when it hit me, one, at, at why speakers of this caliber or, or why they're worth this much money and what they do. And everybody's like, is it really worth it? And I've never done that with any other speaker. So that, to me, really hooked me and, and understood why a high-end speaker like that or, or, or why is it worth it for that. So unbelievable experience listening to these. And here's the room, guys. Remember this room? I mean, mm -hmm. this oh, was... Yeah unbelievable the, the curvature the, the acoustics so this is un, all done acoustically and nicholas told us yesterday that it was some uh I forget the name of the company out in france but some acoustic company helped him out design this room i mean it, it's like a wave it's like an ocean like a you know, the, the sea above you in terms of what what it looks like in the side walls and all the different i mean you see the different angles on the side wall but the wood slats there just really really cool what a great facility you guys uh you guys got a nice demo in there as well didn't you yeah, that, yeah, we actually got uh, an ex 
extended time in there because we were the second group and we kind of finished our tutorials a little early. So they were like, yeah, why don't we just go down here for an extra hour and let you guys do some de some extra demoing. And we really got to listen to everything that we demo in our normal showroom and hear it on that system. And it was awesome. So yeah. did you guys all get to request songs? You, you guys got to request songs too, right? We pat we passed the iPad right down the line. Yeah, we spent we spent uh, quite a decent amount of time in that room uh, listening to everything. And uh, one of the gentlemen there uh, actually went and played a local French artist for us. Um, quite a few tracks from from that gentleman. And <clears throat> what was amazing about it is that you know, I, as someone who who doesn't speak French, uh, I enjoyed the music as if it was something I listened to you know, over here. Um, and I thought that that was a great sign of what a really, really good system could do, right? Like music is not necessarily something where you have to understand exactly what they're saying to get the emotion of it. Like I, I could still feel the emotion of the songs, even though I had no idea what the lyrics were. Um, and, and, you know, part of that is because the system was so captivating and extremely compelling. Um, you know, and that's kind of what we try to achieve in, in two channel stereo, right? Is that sure. emotional experience, that emotional connection and, you know, whether it's on a, you know, half a million dollar system or a $500 system, you know, you're, you're going for the same thing. Um, and that was one of the things that I really took away from is like, wow, I don't even need to know what they're talking <laughs> about for me to really enjoy this. So it was cool. It's like uh, what's that Shawshank when he's playing that woman singing and everybody, you know, you didn't, you don't have to speak Italian to understand, you know, what she was emo uh, you know, sure. emoting at, yeah. at that time. So what was driving this system was basically it's uh, these are all it's name equipment, Focal and the company Name Audio, uh, another great audio company, very uh, uh, recognizable name like Macintosh, uh, very very great powerful company. Uh, this is the amplifier that they have called the Statement. That's what's driving the speakers, and then our source material was streaming content at the time. Uh, title was kind of the, the the thing, so that's what we were using to to listen to most of our stuff here. Uh, this is their their room. Um, part of the training room, and you see some of the other speakers. But you guys said that, uh, so you got to pass around the iPad. What are some of the songs that you guys play? That's always a question we get. You know, what's some good demo content? What do you think, Ryan? Oh, who's that? Hi, Hi I'm hey. Do we have a special guest? What? 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 Whoa. Surprise! I, I had to pop in for a little bit for a couple a couple of reasons. One, of course, I was I was on the trip. Uh, yes, but, you were. Two, uh, you know, we got a lot of comments often that there aren't a lot of women uh, on, on these shows. And I wanted to reiterate that there are women uh, driving the background of these shows. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda, who doesn't get enough shout outs here, uh, kind of monitoring and organizing this whole thing. So, yeah, let's, let's, yes. give, let's give Amanda a little round of applause. Shout out, Amanda. But as you were talking about playlists, I wanted to uh, let people know too that on our blog post, we have a whole blog post recap of this entire trip. Yep. And we've got individual people's recaps too. So a lot of the people that went gave recaps and we have a playlist of all the songs that were demoed. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so at some point, uh, Adam, I hope, I hope we can bring up that blog post and actually look at some of the pictures there. And uh, there's one really amazing picture of, of Sean in particular, right after he got off the plane that I grabbed. Why you, you know, I, can, I, can I just why? throw something out there? I was on 24 hours of no sleep. And very tired. <laughs> I already know what picture. We, yeah. We drove, we drove straight from work that day to the airport, traveled the whole day and then met up with, with the rest of the guys there in, uh, in, in France. So it was, it was a long first day, but, but well worth it. Yeah. Didn't we go eight hour plane ride to, we waited for the train and then it was like a two or three hour train ride. And then from the train, it was like a two hour bus ride and then right to dinner. Yeah. yeah. And then, which nobody touched on yet. We actually were super lucky to be in France at the time because they won the world cup while we were in France and we yeah. got to watch a couple games. And it was, I mean, you think it gets crazy in Philly when the Eagles won a super bowl. It was <laughs> nuts. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. That was the yeah. best. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Get him, Bob. Get him. Bob brought it up and it was 
I definitely have a picture of Ryan yeah. Yeah. I think, on, I think, uh, on the bus. So I we we'll, just, just one or two pictures of Ryan sleeping. There's, there's oh, yeah. photographic evidence of, of yeah, that one. There's one of <laughs> Ellen sleeping in that picture of you, Sean, too. But what, what we did was we, we flew Ooh. in, and then we, we took the, the high-speed train, because they have wonderful high-speed trains there, yeah. uh, all the way to Lyon. And then from Lyon, we took the, the bus to St. Etienne. <laughs> Thank oh, you. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, and that's where the, the 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 JM Labs is and all of that stuff. And the actual driver factory is in Burgundy. So don't forget about the the wine tasting that we did there too. So funny you yeah. should bring that because I have ready to go. Yeah. So this was on our bus trip to <laughs> the winery because at this point we all met. So we're on the bus. You see, I'm um, there, and then you see Ryan there, and then Austin. So these guys just joined us. Mario. And we were headed to this place, which this is, if I remember my uh, my and notes well, uh, this was the largest acreage privately owned winery in France. Like they divide up the land and they were able to house the most. And what was fascinating was learning about all the different you know grapes and where they grow and how they have the different soils in every area just to produce different things. I mean, Emily, this was this was a great time here. And here we all are. <laughs> this and was this was before we started drinking the wine and tasting the wine, so we were yeah. still upright at that time. <laughs> but yeah, well, they, they very much likened the wine tasting to the demos that we sat through. So you yeah. know, they took us through all these different types of wines and what goes into them, and then they they likened that to our, our tour of the factory. Um, you know, what I thought was so interesting. Well, everything's certainly handcrafted and all of that but um everyone that works there took such like crazy pride in everything that they did and there were so many stations and mm -hmm. there wasn't one person that was an expert on the stations what they would do what, what was it every 10 or 30 minutes they would rotate 20 minutes. 20 minutes 20 minutes yeah, yeah. somebody would yeah. you know stay at one station for 20 minutes like doing something and then they they would rotate into the next one so that everyone became an expert at every single part of putting that speaker together, which I, I thought was, you know, if every business did that, I think that would be a much more even playing field for everybody. <laughs> everyone gets to sit in everyone else's shoes and everyone has a hand in every single part of of the speaker and, and, and what goes into it. Um, so I, I thought that was actually one of the, the coolest things and most memorable things. Yeah, one of the, one of the fascinating things um, that, that, you know, correlates between the wine tour and the speaker tour was that when, when we toured the, the wine field there, every part was done with intent. You know, there were specific hills that yielded certain types of grapes um, and they would rotate them throughout the year. Like, like there was nothing that was that was streamlined. Everything was done purposefully, intentfully to develop a specific, you know, taste and it was the same thing with the speaker factory you know the 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 driver material might be similar but the shape of the cone was different on different speakers uh likewise with the cabinets and likewise with the um beryllium tweeter so you know everything was done intentfully which is it says a lot about a, a speaker manufacturer where you know, there are cases where sometimes it's, you know, about, you know, value and, and, and price point with, with, with them. It was really about how do we make the best speaker with what we have? Uh, and it was, it was very, very cool to see um, in person. <laughs> Chris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, young and well, well quaffed. <laughs> I know. Everybody's so well groomed. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I'm taking away from this is looking at yeah. this picture again. Like, man, I need a haircut. <laughs> yeah, I need a haircut. I know I do. Well, we know you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second here. I mean, the other thing. I mean, talk about like the food. Um, that was some of the best eating that I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and I don't normally the the one the one I always show people this this picture from my trip here. I have it. Where, where is it? Hold on. Oh. Is it <laughs> no, it's not the escargot. That was uh, that was a Sean's uh, deal. That was amazing. There it is. It so I mean, it, it was. So you see, 
you see the cook on that steak like that's Ooh. a steak that i would i would not normally eat around here you know when you're when you're there and you're in france and we're sitting there and i asked for my steak you know medium rare which is normally what i eat and that's how it came out and I, when i cut into it i said Ooh, that's a little it's a little underdone oh. from what i would normally think around here but uh, it was like it was the best steak that i've ever had it was amazing to eat it that way um i don't know just something different about the the beef that's over there i guess and the but that was and the oh yeah oh god so good yeah oh so god yeah <laughs> so yeah that's that was my takeaway was was you know this just how how well or how you know you can eat a steak like that and it was so fantastic so fantastic i think the best thing that i ate when we were over there was that we had this like fish dish that was uh it had some like cream freeze on it and it was really 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 amazing and they put some capers and i'm not i don't normally eat that kind of stuff it but it was so good awesome. <laughs> oh, there you go. that's awesome you know i don't know where adam got that picture from austin i don't i don't know where he got it from. i went so i went um I was very open-minded with the food that I would try over there. Usually, um, I'm not necessarily as open-minded over here, but you know, we're we're in a different country. Their culture is different. Their uh, traditions are different. So, you know, why not uh, adopt their 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 taste for that time being and, and see what it's all about? So, um, I'm glad always, I did. It always so, helps when Bob's sitting next to you and tells you. you better <laughs> eat it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, did, I, 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 I did. You need to eat this. I couldn't. Yeah, their capers were this big. Yeah, they, I, they were like yeah. eating an apple. You know, it was. Uh, I couldn't, I, I couldn't say no, you know, I just, I had to, I had to take that one on the chin and uh, enjoy it. That's also the picture that pops up when Austin calls me on my cell phone, by the way. Is it really? <laughs> That's a good yeah. picture. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, so what were some of, uh, so the other factory we went to was the, uh, the cabin factory. Um, are you are you able to bring up the blog post? Do you have that up? I am looking. I'm looking for it right now. I'm on our page. I'm on the. Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm Amanda linked it for you. Oh, well, that's yeah, always. I can talk about these things in the in the live show now. <laughs> uh, uh, there it is. See, I was yeah. All right, let me copy. So there's a lot of pictures of the factory in there, and from start to finish, uh, we got a pretty behind the scenes tour of that factory. This tour. Okay, so I see you. Okay, so let me share this. Uh, let me share this page with you. And we'll there in Chrome tab. There we go. Share. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Got it. Yeah, so that's on our blog right now, um, and it, it linked, uh, thank you, Amanda. Amanda just linked that up for everybody. I, I highly recommend everyone check that out. That's got, I mean, everything from start to finish, from where they, you know, they source the wood to, you know, the, the clamps. I think, Adam, you brought this up a little bit yesterday mm -hmm. in, well, with the actual Focal guys and the product designers themselves. Uh, I actually got to do that, Sander. They let me try that. Cool. Yeah. yeah, they had to yeah. throw it out after you were done, but they, they let you try it. <laughs> and I got a little, I got a little deep on the grade, but it it worked. Yeah. Out. It worked out. <laughs> one, one thing that's worth noting is that every single one of their speakers uh, starts as a piece of either you know MDF board or you know some form of a, a high density board, um, and that's it. It's just a sheet. They have different thicknesses, but they all start. It's just a sheet um, and, and end up looking like what you see there. Um, so it, it, it's very cool. I mean, everything's done by them. You know, they, they control the ingredients and they mix it all together to, to, you know, really give you that experience that we got to enjoy with the yeah. Grand Utopias. But those right. Grand Utopias started off as a piece of, you know, uh, you know, a high density board there. So it, it's very, um, it's impressive. A lot of it's hand built too, but any machines that they actually have as part of that factory, I mean, not the sander, but like any of the larger machines that they have, they actually have their, their product designers are the ones that design those machines. So they actually built the machine the speakers that they made. Yep. Which was why we weren't able to take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 no. 
but I mean, yeah, I, the, that machine that, that Austin was talking about, it's like a, it rotates on five different axes and has cutters everywhere. They opened it up for us and we watched a board actually go through there. And it's just so cool and how it all cut it up and came out. And it's, it's, it, it's almost like pretty much ready to go. There's some sanding and things like that that need to happen to it. But you know, it's, it's, that's, that's one machine that they have. The other one they were, I think they were still thinking about updating cause that was, I think almost 30 years old at that point was the other one that they had. But, um, yeah, what a what a cool machine. And then their headphones that they have are tremendous. We saw the headphone factory. And speaking of uh, of women, wasn't it told to us that only women do the headphones because of their attention to detail, uh, because everything is so small and so fine. It has to be so precise that I think only they have the, the women were just running that that department yeah. out there for the headphones, which was that was very interesting, too. The, the, the men weren't quite as nimble and as careful as as. Big yeah, hands, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a little, little shaky. Oh, too, Ryan. So. <laughs> <laughs> the seven oh. put disappearing yeah. act. Yeah. yeah. Well, th that was, um, so I think it was, was it Matt Hecht maybe that said that? He was on a couple of weeks ago from Audio yep. Club, but, uh, yep. with us on the trip, and he described it as uh, it was what the seven foot biggest, biggest disappearing act he's ever seen. And you know that's when, as we were sitting there uh, getting that demo, it was almost mm -hmm. the speakers just completely disappeared. Um, so I thought I thought that was the best way anyone could have possibly described that. I thought that was a very very eloquent way of, yeah. of capturing that that demo space and, and the experience that we sat through. Um, sure. And 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 yes, Karen Cole, you can get these speakers in whatever color you want. We have a pair of Eagles Green, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's at our Ardmore showroom, uh, custom Eagles green. Uh, yes. Don't they have a pair of flyers? And, the, and they. Too? We have the JB, the JBL L100s uh, have a flyers oh, orange okay. custom grill, but the uh, the the Focal Sofas are a are a um, local sports team green. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's not in writing, but. <laughs> the and um, and yeah, we actually, actually, believe it or not, we do have a really good deal on those if anyone's interested. <laughs> so Gerald asks, what about quality control? Well, that's a great question. But I mean, the quality control is superb because everything has been put together by someone. It's a human looking at it. I mean, if you look back, let me go back to the post and I'll scroll up a little bit. You see this guy with like a flashlight going over the, there, right? This guy right here. You know, and what they're looking for is they're looking for imperfections in the paint, uh, how it adhered to make sure that it's perfect. Um, one of the hardest colors to get right is what this guy's working on right here, which is just a straight piano black finish. Um, it's insanely hard because that shows any pit, any imperfection. Um, that's why you see some of their speakers that they do, uh, they have a, a speckled uh uh, black finish so it has like sparkles in it and that's much easier to do because it it could potentially hide any blemishes that are in it you just can't see them so getting that right is insanely hard so gerald absolutely the quality control is top notch with them um, because they're doing everything they even have like when the speaker when they're loading it when it's done it's basically a it's like a, a strap and a helper that, that lifts the speaker up and then some one guy watches it goes down into the box and he seals everything up i mean it's it's superb to see the quality control on these speakers but that's a great question and with the uh the driver assembly line correct me if i'm wrong but as the uh driver was assembled and kind of evolved as it went down the assembly line if there was a mistake mm -hmm. would would they not stop it right there and, and and go back so that way you know there weren't multiple um you know uh, malfunctions or, or yeah. uh, flaws within within that that batch that were being built at that time yeah yeah there was a so they would take the driver and they hook it up and they put it into this basically small little anechoic chamber that they have right there and test the speaker and measure the speaker to make sure it's performing properly based on what they're looking for and if you didn't catch when we had nicholas on yesterday in a nutshell i mean every speaker when you look at a, when you look at one of their speakers and here let me quickly bring up just a picture of, of, of a, one of their speakers. okay so you look at this speaker here right here all right this speaker that my mouse is over right here that i'm, I'm circling around that speaker is made for that position for this speaker only you will not find that speaker anywhere else in the line it's made specifically for the grand utopia to be the top mid-bass driver for this speaker and that's something that 
I, was one of my big takeaways because when I heard that and they said like we only make this driver for this speaker in this whole position, it's like, dude, it's going to take you forever to make a speaker. <laughs> like, like yeah. how? Like that's insane. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna build a driver specifically for that speaker for that whole position. That's unbelievable, you know. But that's their whole philosophy. They feel like if you can take care of 95% or 90% of the problems in making a speaker at that driver, then the rest is easy. You know, the re after that, it's, it's, it's easy. Minimum amount of electronics, fix the problem at the driver. It's just a concept that makes so much sense to me. Yeah. So and for, for what it's worth uh, also noting, and, and we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier as well. Um, we had an opportunity to interact with the uh, FOCAL employees that were working on the assembly line and every single one of them loved FOCAL speakers. Like it was a, it was a genuine authentic love, you know, and that, that's a, a rare thing to find is, you know, uh, you might work for a company, but finding that genuine love is always something that is um, you can't fake it. Um, so I, I thought that that was uh, a very, um, impressive and it was also something i didn't expect <laughs> hey, sleeping <laughs> yeah. that's me 24 hours yep. of no sleep right there no, you still look pretty 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 badass <laughs> like you we, look like <laughs> we we, we yeah. just landed uh it was, it was a real fun yeah. trip even though it was it was long and tired <laughs> yeah um, sean can, or, or adam can you um see i want people to see that acoustic room if you scroll up to that youtube video i think it, you know the audio certainly would not be the same <laughs> as if you're there but i think it pans over the room can you actually hear that i don't think you can probably not but yeah no um i think so that's the jurassic park i asked to listen to <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan, do you want to tell your Jurassic Park story? I do. I, it's been eating at me this, since we started this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time. Put me in a yeah. desert island with a TV and DVD player. That's the movie I'm choosing. So everyone went around and picked really good demo material that I heard since my time starting at Worldwide. So I chose John Williams' cut of the main theme of Jurassic Park. And the peanut gallery was coming at me like, oh, this is going to be terrible. It started to play. And everyone was just in total silence. I think Bob caught a couple tears. Like, <laughs> beautiful. And since I was in wave one of the trip, I then came to find out that that's all that was played <laughs> after I left because it got so much of an attention and how gorgeous, yeah, there it is, number two. Yeah. <laughs> Such gorgeous yeah. attention. Well, and and what's, what's really funny, and you're right, as soon as it started playing, like it, it opened up, but then it hit that like, you know, the, the, the theme in the, in the middle of it and everyone started smiling. And then throughout the rest of the trip, every single bus ride, what were people singing? <laughs> <laughs> so it's to, a really to nice. Quote, it, to it quote goes, Bob Cole, I think he said he felt like he was riding a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it really yeah. goes to show like what, like, we weren't even watching the movie, but like as soon as we heard it, it was like that instant nostalgic, like brought us back to the movie. And I mean, I haven't seen Jurassic Park in years. I, I smiled and now, and it's a joke, even when I demo stuff, I I, I, I play it because it's, you know, fun. You shot me a text the other night. Hey, your song came I on. Did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. I did, it was just the other night. Oh. But yeah, that, that, that was really cool. And we, I heard demos uh, and songs that I had never heard before. And, and there was really some really good stuff in there. And honestly, mm -hmm. I forgot about this playlist. So for anyone looking for some really cool demo songs, uh, you know, we should add those to our Cobuzz playlist too. Yeah, uh, no, we were certainly sure. It's, it's, yeah. it's sad though, this, the Hallelujah track is no longer available to stream. Yeah, yeah well, that, on, that, on was those platforms. One. that was That was one of my personal favorite demo tracks. And um, when it was removed, I, I was I was quite upset. Yeah. So, no, it was. Uh, yeah. That's, so we should. Yeah, we should definitely try and get that on there. The Stairway to Heaven from the the uh, 
Gabe, Gabriella. The Rodriel and Gabriella. Yeah, that was fantastic. So cool. Yeah, that Such was a really good one. That whole playlist Come is on, actually say awesome. Hi. Say yeah. hi. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tori. Everybody wants to say hi. No? No. <laughs> no. Ah, we tried. We tried. Aww. So yeah, we'll get that. We'll we'll get that up on our on our Kobas playlist for sure. Uh let's see here. Let me take a look. Why were they using name and not deviate, which is French? Well, that's the partnership that the I think the the ownership of the of of the company that that owns both Focal and Name they're they're together. So the the bank <laughs> certainly owns both yeah. companies and Name is a, is fantastic. I mean their their Unity stuff I think is great when the with um, the built-in streaming services that they have the Unity app. I mean, uh, great great material, great amplifiers. I mean they sound wonderful. So certainly not a uh, not a slouch by any 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 stretch yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. So other than that, I mean, so we talked certainly about a lot of the cool stuff that was around um, in 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 Focal and the things that we learned um, and some of the some of the takeaways. But I want to get more. Let's let's go into again talking about some of those tracks. We can go back to the the demo tracks that we had listed here. Um, so obviously, uh, Ryan, we know what you're what you're playing. Uh, yep. Whoa! And this was a big one. I didn't mean to click play on there. I just had audio coming through my headphones there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> you didn't hear anything, but I was yeah. like, whoa! Yeah. Uh, but this was a big one. Make us stronger by Ghost Rider. If y'all haven't heard this on a on a speaker system, um, it is. Oh, I'm not sharing right now. There you go. It is fantastic. Um, great, great, like pop techno kind of house tune. If you want to stretch your subwoofers out a little bit and, and get them to go, uh, that's a track to play for sure. Um, I think there's there's always different things that I'm looking for when I play, but there's a track out there that I use, and I recently told it to Amanda um, to help her at her house with setting up her speakers. Uh, it's by Jennifer Warrens, and it's off the famous Blue Raincoat. And it's called Ballad of a Runaway Horse, and it's a track that... Um, it's very, very simple. There's an upright bass. Uh, there's a vocalist and Jennifer Warrens. And if you get your speaker set up just right, you will hear, I mean, she is absolutely dead center. And that's the only thing in her, her, the voice sounds as big as a human head should sound. And that's a demo track that I use to help set up speakers. So if you guys want to try and find that and use that out there to help set up your speakers, it's really amazing and what you can do. Um, and a tip would be to, when you're sitting and listening, move that right speaker forward and backward, okay? So bring it out and bring it in. And as you move that forwards and backwards, when you bring it out more forward, her voice is gonna pan right. And if you push it back, okay, she's gonna pan left. And somewhere in the middle of that, you'll actually find that spot where whoop, she lines up and she's perfect right in the middle. And when you do that, great things will happen for your audio system. So I wanna give you all that little tip out there. That's a great track to use for setting up speakers and kind of testing to see to make sure things are all lined up. Uh, but Sean, when you're, what's your first track that you like to play on on speakers? If you're looking for gr a great vocal track, what are you looking for? Uh, I tend to play. I like really like the Marion Hill down track. Um, if I really want some vocals to pop, I, I always go uh, with a, a little Whitney as well. Because you know, yeah, Whitney. I love Whitney. Whitney so. Houston. <laughs> Whitney Houston, yes. Yes, that would be Whitney. As opposed to? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just making sure. Right? Is there another Whitney out there? I mean, my, people might be wondering who we're talking about. I'm just, just throwing it out there, making sure Whitney Houston. There's only but one Whitney. There's only I, one Whitney, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. There's only one. That's good, too. Who? Adele. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, another Whitney. <laughs> yeah, what? You know what's interesting about Adele tracks? It's because her voice is so powerful. If you have a speaker that has maybe a little bit of a, of a brightness to the like a tweeter or something like that, or even actually, let me correct myself because let me hold on a second. I need to be full screen for this. Di or if I vocalist, yeah, watch out. Vocals come out of the mid range driver. Okay. I think that's a misconception out there that people don't realize. Like people think that all the vocals can sometimes come out of the tweeter part of the speaker, but the mid range driver is really what handles those vocals and all of them really. Um, so it's, that's where the harshness a lot of times comes from is in that mid range driver. And with Adele, 
or, or even Carrie Underwood. There's another female vocalist who has just a powerhouse voice. I mean, you cannot turn her down. She does not know how to turn herself down. She can't. They're so powerful. And if you have a speaker that's a little bit harsh in there, it's sometimes hard to listen to Adele and Carrie Underwood track. So that's another artist that I like to play on speakers uh, just to kind of test that out to see where it's at. You know, when they when they hit those hard notes, does it does it hurt my ears? Um, so those are some tracks that I usually look for as well as you guys know, I love using a guy named Chris Stapleton. Mm -hmm. uh, not only will he make you cry and give goosebumps, but he's a fantastic, phenomenal singer. But that can really show you if you got a harsh speaker or not. So, I know Austin's got a great demo track that he uses. Is it the John Mayer one that you use, Austin? Live track, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I use a palette of songs um, <laughs> when demoing speakers. <laughs> Um, and the reason the reason why I do that is because there's uh, a lot of different capabilities and ranges that you want to be able to show that a speaker can reproduce, right? So I always tell people all the time, you can take a you know well produced song that was done in a studio and you can play it on you know a three hundred dollar speaker, a three hundred thousand dollar speaker, it'll sound great, right? So how do you why buy the three hundred thousand dollar speaker? You have to find pieces of music that that challenge the speaker in order to really appreciate why that speaker is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I usually try to stay away from modern pop music, things that are oversynthesized, things that are uh, overproduced in, in, in a studio, and try to go for more live uh, recordings. Uh, so John Mayer, uh, Gravity, uh, off the, the Where the Lights Are tour, it's a, a Blu-ray. It's actually an awesome concert Blu-ray, yes, uh, if, 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 you're, if you're into that. It is a really good demo track because you are able to pick up on a lot of nuance um, inside of, of that track, right? Crowd noise, people whispering. Mm -hmm. on, on a really, really good pair of speakers, you can almost make out what people in the crowd are talking about. You know, and that's it, it, yeah. it's really impressive because the microphones are focused, you know, on on uh, John Mayer. He's got a, you know, a, a mic that he's singing into. The drum kit has a mic. The guitar has a mic. Yet somehow you're still able to pick up these other nuances. Um, so that, that's one of my personal favorite. Maria Callas. Uh, I actually have really grown fond of her. Uh, I like a lot of classical music. Believe it or not. And and my my Game of Thrones friends here uh, will we'll, we'll know mm -hmm. what this is. Mm -hmm. The gentleman who produced that score for that scene with the Night King and Arya and all that stuff, uh, he also produced spoiler a couple alert. Of spoiler alert. <laughs> I didn't say. I, I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't, I didn't, he also he also he also produced a few scores for Westworld, and mm -hmm. and there's something about his music that just like i'm like I, it just it, it it makes me so amped up so fired up it was like back in the day you know if i was playing sports i'd listen to stuff to get me you know amped up before i went out into the field you know that's almost like what it does for me now which yeah it it, it, blow, it blows my mind because it's it's it, it's classical with strings it's violin and it, it's you know 10 years ago I, that never would have been my head wouldn't even considered listening to it and it just sure. um it, it's amazing so uh, it, it depends you know it just depends on uh what's important to who i'm playing the music for so emily you're getting into you know an audio system and a turntable and all that kind of stuff has there been a, a favorite track that you're kind going to see some of the background right now Nope. Yeah, I've, uh, we, I mean, spending after, you know, the Cobas uh, live show that we did a couple weeks ago, certainly I've been exploring all the high res stuff on there and, um, and you know, playing with some vinyl and, and kind of listening to what that uh, sounds like. Uh, but I, I love Marion Hills Down, as, as Sean called out. And I, I, I only know of that song because of the trip to France, and, and that's what you guys were playing. Um, there was also, uh, Lake Street Dive was another song that came up a lot. Um, that's on our Cobas playlist, but one that I've really, really been loving that, uh, um, uh, Noah also, uh, enjoys quite a bit is Curtis Mayfield's Pusherman. <laughs> Sounds 
so so good on this. Hmm. He's my pusher man. Oh, it's- <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that song. I haven't heard it. Salt um, peanut, salt peanut. You know, bits of like, <laughs> instrumental stuff going on, and it like honestly, like I had some people listening to it, and they just like instantly smiled, and like if, of course they made fun of me initially, and they're like, "Whoa, this is super good." Um, and uh, what, the other one that um, was kind of, uh, you know, off, not on my playlist at the time, but now is is uh, Sia's Cheap Thrills because at mm-hmm. the at, uh, when we were oh. testing, demoing um, Focal's headphones, yeah. um, that was on the playlist, and like the 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 bass that was coming through through the headphones, like that, you know, just at the beginning of the song. Uh, uh, it sounds Sean, cool. Sean Paul gets you pumped up in that one too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that who it is? <laughs> yeah, he's on that. So I, I'm more focused. He's like, on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like that, just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing that I discovered the other night, um, again, uh, Koba's like has this little uh section at the top that has all the new uh stuff that they've remastered, etc. They have uh Prince's Purple Rain and it's a live show. It's it's really long. <laughs> it's like an extended instrumental, but like when he gets really into it and you can hear the people in the audience, uh, I agree with uh, Austin that the live shows, it's pretty cool to hear what's in there. Um, and then Jason Isbell's uh, Cover Me Up. There's, mm-hmm. a live, there's a high res live version of that performance. And I love that song. That's like my, my uh, Chris Stapleton equivalent, you know, kind of like the right. guy who really sing and make you emotional. So if you guys like uh, listening to like the live stuff for those little nuances in the audience, it's a total audiophile, like gotta have album, but jazz at the pawn shop. Um, look that up. Thank me later. You've said this before. It's yeah, it, it's a total audiophile, like, like recording, like everybody, any audiophile out there is going to have this recording or has listened to this recording. It's just one of those demo tracks that, you know, it's a, it's a staple demo track. So, so look that up on Kobo. It's called jazz at the pawn shop. And just the, the opening song there is like a bunch of musicians just kind of, they're, they're in like a coffee bar and you hear the register cha-ching and you hear the, the, the coffee and the cups and, and, the, and the utensils hitting the plates and all those little little chatter going on in the background. You can kind of just envision this little band off in the corner kind of thing and atmosphere. It's a really cool track. If you like stuff like that, that is definitely one of the better recordings out there for as, as far as audio file recordings go. Uh, so check that out if you guys like that kind of ambiance uh, type sound going on. And what's up, Sean? Just trying to say hey. <laughs> Not you, Sean. He's saying hi to me. His name is Sean. <laughs> Can we give Jamie Lee a shout out to you? Jamie's another uh, strong woman at Worldwide Stereo that needs a, a good applause here. Absolutely. Yes. Thank That's you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We, we, we even, you. You, even though you called me a gnome. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get here on the, her on this live show uh, real soon. You know, you know what I was um, I was just thinking about. This was at the Montgomeryville store, and we had the uh, the Utopia Maestros hooked up with the Max six six hundred ones at that point before the six elevens came out. So I played I played a track for um, a couple, and it was Willie Nelson, hmm. always on my mind. And you know what? The they both started. It just just tears coming down their face. It it was it was just it was this it was this awesome experience, but it was also something where I'm like, like what do I do? Like I didn't want to cut the song off. Like <laughs> no, I enjoyed no, it so play. much, you let know. So I, you know, we had like the the lights were dimmed down perfectly, so the speakers were highlighted, and it was just like a really really cool experience. So I just kind of stepped back and. I almost left the room, you know, it's just like, here, just li- <laughs> just listen to it. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was funny because, it, you know, it's an older track and it's not necessarily the, the, the most well-recorded track, right? You know, and, and, and again, that goes back to, it's just all, all about that emotional connection, right? Like we listen to music when we're happy. We listen to music when we're mad. We listen when we're yeah. sad. We listen when we're, we ha- whatever it is, right? And, um, you know, finding a way for you to connect with your system is, is so important. Speaking of. Emily, what are you drinking? Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, no, I was going to say that the, the oh, speaking of Ooh, the uh, happy and sad. So we've got our little, uh, this is a Bob Cole favorite emoji, founder and president of Worldwide Stereo. 
or CEO of World Wide Stereo. So sad plus music equals happy. That's our little World Wide Stereo koozie that we have. So uh, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's like the ultimate like simplistic view of, thank you, I just had a package delivered. <laughs> so um, this is a toppling Goliath Brewing Company into nice. Galactic Warrior Pale Ale. I have their, I have their, uh, their was a King Sue, I think it is, or double IPA. I have that, I think, in the in the fridge. So good stuff. Yeah. So perfectly fits our little koozie. It does, and you know what, Tori like comments on this. Tori's my four year old, oh, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, hey, sad music, happy. So uh, teaching her young, absolutely. <laughs> it is. It is. It really is. Yeah, I, I particularly love listening to really sad music, but it still makes me happy. So, so it's almost therapeutic, so, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so I, I love it. So I put together my own, like uh, we were talking about doing our own personal playlist on Code Buzz and kind of sharing it with each other. I think a little while back, and I, so I started doing that, and I got about halfway through, and I'm like. Man, a lot of my favorite songs are really sad. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's why just I mean, how it worked out. Uh, yeah, feel to like kind of like dance yeah. a little bit. Not that it's a. Uh, if you look at the the words, it's not the happiest of songs, but it sounds happy. So one what, what of my favorite playlists is actually it's, it's on title. If you go to the classical genres, they have a um, uh, a, a piano playlist of just you know top one hundred random. Um, you know, piano songs. And yep. it's something that I put on, you know, every morning when, when I go to work, you know, down in Ardmore, and it allows me, you know, just this elevated level of concentration, right? It's almost like, you know, for some people, they drink coffee. Some people might, you know, drink a, uh, an energy drink in the morning that allows them to to focus and concentrate more. And it's funny, this playlist, I put it on and it's like, next thing I know, I'm like whizzing through and, and extremely efficient. And it's all attributed to that music, right? You know, it's just, it's just yeah. it, it's amazing what, you know, if you really break it down, what music is, right? It's just, yep. it's just sound, it's frequencies, it's, you know, gaps in air pressure, what that can actually do for you mentally. Um, and, and it can help you out subconsciously. It, it, it's a really valuable thing that um, I hope that younger generation, you know, my generation as well. Um, yeah, you are the younger generation. I, yeah, yeah, no, that's what, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, 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 I love it. I mean, I, I, I grew up around it, but um, I do have friends that, you know, I have a pair of clip speakers behind me, and that's probably the best system they've heard. You know, and um, it's great. That's their reference level. And then, you know, to me, I've been fortunate and blessed to have listened to some of these incredible systems. So it's like my, my bar of reference is, is much higher. And I, I hope that other people out there my age get an opportunity to, to really listen to music in, in the way that it, would, that it should be. You know, I think it's important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the perfect time to start a vinyl collection, which is kind of, again, what uh, is happening in the in the background here <laughs> of, of the room, but I, I work every day and I put on records, but, um, and for, if I could, like if, uh, you know, I know we're, we're coming up uh, at, at six o'clock, of course, but we're mm -hmm. always looking for new tracks to play. So always looking for you guys to comment, um, uh, you know, what music you're listening to, what's on your playlist, please share your playlist. Uh, we're always adding things to ours, whether it's on Cool Buzz or Spotify or Tidal, et cetera. Always looking for new tracks or rare tracks or old tracks we didn't know about. Um, so please, please, please share. Uh, we love sharing music uh, and we'll continue yeah. to do so. Um, and, you know, we're going to keep up these hi fi happy hours too, but. Also, if, if there's a better time of day for people, um, you know, we're always looking for feedback there too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if people want to join, keep joining us for these happy hours too. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, there's a new there's a new band out there called. Well, I don't know if they're new, but they're new to me called Spafford. If you guys like uh, kind of like jam band style like bands, like without getting like I, I view like Grateful Dead, like they get like way off the deep end sometimes, and you're not sure exactly what's happening, but it's a whole bunch of music happening. Uh, this band Spafford is pretty cool. They're they're very organized, but it's it's that jam band like happy feel kind of music. So they've been really cool. Check them out if you're looking to that kind of stuff. So 
but yes, we appreciate all your all your feedback, your feedback here, and uh, you know any questions. Again, I'll throw up our numbers here, so you can always reach out to us and um, ask us anything. You know whether it's related to hey, what was that song you talked about the other night, or you know I need help setting this up, or, or questions about this technology. We are here to help you. All of us just want to help you. We do well by doing good. That's our motto and what we like. But we always like, as Emily said, like your feedback. Let us know what you're listening to, tracks that you want to add, or, or, or great music. Just we love talking about this kind of stuff. That's what we're, that's what we're here for. So, um, everybody tonight, thank you so much for taking the time and joining our Hi-Fi Happy Hour. Emily, thank you so much for coming in. It was a pleasure having you. Ryan, Austin, Sean, thank you guys again for joining. Great night tonight. As always, this is Adam with Worldwide Stereo reminding y'all to listen to music every day. So long. Yeah, guys. <laughs>